If you've had an injury and then you've had a surgery, after that there's physical therapy and that's changing to be before now you have your surgery. Luke O'Brien uh, is with the Howard Head Center that deals with physical therapy here at the Stebbin Clinic and the Stebbin Philippon Research Institute. Tell me what's changing in your field based on injury prevention. Yeah, so I think that there's a lot of elements that go into creating an injury. So the first is being able to define what are those components. So what role is the environment playing on injury development? What role is biomechanics playing on injury development? And what role is training load? And beginning to understand that um, nothing happens in isolation and that it's usually the interplay between all of these three factors that lead to, the, to an injury uh, occurring in an athlete or just a recreational warrior like myself. At what level can we start paying attention to this? I mean, do you have to be a high school athlete or can you be an eight-year-old who's in your first year of Little League sports? I think as soon as you enter organized sport that has a training schedule, then you need to be aware of it and you need to be um, um, having good advice and, and guidance to make sure that the training practices and, and your competition, competition schedule is appropriate for you at that period of your development. Part of this then is dealing with parents and coaches. Uh, there's some coaches out there at the little league level that are pretty aggressive. Uh, you have to change a culture here. Absolutely. Um, the, the thing that usually gets through with coaches is that team success is reliant on having all of their players available and healthy to play. And very few teams are highly successful when their best stars are injured, whether that be at little league level, whether it be minor leagues or, or at the big leagues. And so keeping people fit and healthy and in the game is integral not only to the individual success, but to the team success. Coaches almost always understand that language. Part of this, I'm going to tell you a story about my own son who played on a U.S. national hockey team and in the last years of college hockey had a very serious back problem. But he refused to tell anyone because if he sat on the bench, he was going to lose his position to somebody else. And... Athletes are scared about that. Um, do you deal with that? Do you, you run into that problem? Yeah, absolutely. So, so fear of, uh, so it's, it really is the culture of the, the team and the sport. And so uh, some teams and sports are more apt to have this problem. But one of the, the uh, tools that I've used to, to help athletes is they're never able to compete at the level that they want to, at the performance and, and level that they want to when they're injured. And so when, when you're able to create um, a healthy athlete, then they're able to achieve their athletic goals and potential. But an injured athlete is always um, battling something that limits their ability to achieve those goals. And so it's so important to have a, a rational educational process to help change the culture surrounding that injury. So you're participating in this symposium about injury prevention. What are a couple of takeaways that you've got already? little kids are not big adults. And so what is appropriate for minors and what is appropriate for adults is entirely different. And they shouldn't, we shouldn't just apply the uh, evidence and the science that we have from the adult population to a little league level and expect the same results. I'm gonna go a little longer here with you because you're very interesting and you have a great perspective. When I played sports, which is a long time ago now, well, I still ski and do other things, but. Kids played three high school sports or right. two college sports. When my son came up to the hockey ranks, by the time he was 13, if he didn't play hockey almost year round, those he was competing for positions against would get better and take those positions. But there's disadvantages to this, right? You have muscle development or skeletal development issues. Am, am I correct with that? Yeah, so you, being a one sport athlete leads to musculoskeletal developments that predispose you to be successful in that sport. So for instance, there's something that happens in the arm to all pitchers um, that helps them be a better pitcher, but it doesn't necessarily make them a better golfer or a better tennis player. Um, Can you have overuse? If you're, if you're a pitcher and you're starting pitching for your little league team at age 10, by the time you're 18, uh, if, if things haven't been done correctly, couldn't you have already ruined your arm? Yeah, absolutely. And I think particularly in the youth levels, it comes down to load. So we have a lot of uh, work surrounding pitch counts. So you might be able to do 80 pitches in a game. Now for one athlete, they might be used to doing 70 pitches in a game. 80 pitches is no problem. But if there's another athlete who is entering into that game with an 80 pitch count and they're only used to doing 20, then that's a fourfold increase in their volume. 
you're going to set that person up for an injury. And we, if not managed correctly, it'll have long-term implications. What you're doing is extremely important, and I wish you well.